Blessed morning to everyone. Let's begin our Sunday school. Let us begin by singing a song of praise. Let us sing Victory in Jesus. May I request everyone to please stand. Let us sing Victory in Jesus, hymn number 116. Hymn number 116 in your hymn books. Victory in Jesus. All together on the first verse, ready, sing. I heard an old, old story. How a Savior came from glory How He gave His life on Calvary To save a wretch like me I heard about His groaning Of His precious blood atoning Then I repented of my sins And won the victory Oh, victory in Jesus My Savior forever He sought me and bought me With His redeeming blood He loved me ere I knew Him And all my love to him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing blood. You may be seated. Amen. Um, good morning po sa lahat, lalo na po sa mga nasa online Ayan, uh, kung maaari lang i-share nyo, so, share natin yung live streaming ng church na sa mga friends natin or sa mga GC ninyo. Okay, so before we start, mag-pray muna tayo. Panginoong Diyos, salamat po sa umagang ito na binigyan niyo po sa amin. Uh, thank you for the strength, for the uh, mercy and grace that you've given to us sa mga nakarang araw, Panginoon. Uh, as we uh, have this uh, Sunday School, Panginoon, na ay uh, buksan mo po ang aming isipan, ang aming puso, Panginoon, to receive your word and to teach us, Panginoon. Maraming salamat po sa pangalan ng anak ni Jesus. Amen. Okay, so, um, share mo na ako ng isang story dito. So, in 7, 756 AD, uh, a castle in China was under siege and within the castle were 2,000 men led by Zhang Zun, general of Tang Dynasty. And outside of castle was the Yan Dynasty with roughly 40,000 men. 2,000 men versus 40,000 men. And it is not good for General Zhang. And after a number of days, his troops began to run out of arrows. But the general came up with an idea. He ordered hundreds of straw dummies and dressed them as soldiers and lowered them down over the wall of the castle. So, akala ng mga kalaban is mga sundalo sila. And they started to fire arrows, leaving arrows embedded in the dummies. And Zhang's men pulled the straw dummies to collect the arrows, replenishing their arsenal. Arsenal and keep on repeating this trick until the enemies noticed and stopped shooting. At that point, Zhang replaced the dummies into a real person and they were success, uh, successful because no one was shooting at them and launched a surprise attack to the Yan army. This is one of the uh, strangest successful military strategy in history. And it is good to say na effective yung strategy nila and it makes sense nga naman. But as we continue our lesson in chapter 7 in Judges, uh, mababasa natin a very odd and in human perspective, walang sense yung strategy na ini-instruct sa kanya. Uh, kay Gideon, uh, malalaman natin yas, uh, ano nga ba yung, mga, uh, yung instructions na yun. Uh, the title of our lesson for today is Relying on God's, uh, in God's strength. So, we'll start in verse 1. Dito nag-prepare sila na, na for, for a big war. 
verse 1. Uh, then Jerubal, who is Gideon, and all the people that were with him, with him, rose up early and preached beside the well of Harod, so that the host of the Midianites were on the north side of them, by the hill of More in the valley. Now, the last time we saw Gideon in chapter 6, is tinawag siya ng Panginoon na mighty man of valor. Uh, Gideon had just rallied up all Israel's forces from different tribes. And he was finally ready to go out to battle. But before he actually went out, kung naaalala nyo, uh, he asked God for signs of the fleece. He asked God to make it wet and then to make it dry in the next morning or next day to confirm or reassure that God would give him the victory. And because of God's patience, uh, patience na rin, kay Gideon, binigay niya yung, uh, yung signs na yon. Binigay ng Panginoon yung sign na hinihingi ni uh, Gideon miraculously. And way after God showed him, Gideon is now ready to obey God's command. He is now ready to go into battle as we can uh, come up to chapter 7. It opens up by telling us that Gideon gathers his army and camp near the spring of Harod, which is about five miles away sa kampo ng Kaaway, the, the Midianites. Verse 2, And the Lord said unto Gideon, The people that are with thee are too many, uh, are too many for me to give the Midianites into their hands. Okay, so dun muna. Focus muna tayo konti dito sa verse na ito. Obviously, the stage and the scene is set and malaking labanan yung mangyayari. A big showdown between the Midianites and the Israelites. So talagang ready na itong army ni Gideon and waiting for the right time or the instruction. But before any fighting happens, God says to Gideon, and allow me to paraphrase it, Gideon, sandali lang, masyado kayong marami. And it's not what we expect God to say. And it is, um, logically speaking, and obviously, Midianites, eh, nasa 135,000 sila versus 32,000 of Israelites. So parang apat na, Isra uh, apat na Midianites sa isang Israelites. In addition, mas advanced yung, yung gamit ng Midianites compared to them na, di ba, na, Kumbaga, hindi naman sila born to be a fighter or, or talagang warrior sila. And talagang talo yon So expected natin, uutusan siya to, diba, to get more army para one, one is to one yung laban. So may, may mas sense sa atin yon Sabi niya, Gideon, your troops, your men, your army are too many for me to give your enemies into your hand. So, maring tanongin natin, why? Diba? Yung numbers namin is hindi pa sapat for, uh, for Midianites. Well, the reason is that God want to reduce Gideon's army instead of uh, increasing it, sinabi niya dun sa susunod na, uh, na sentence, uh, lest Israel, in verse 2 pa rin, vaunt themselves against me, saying, mine own hand hath Save me. Vaunt, or sa ibang translation, is to boast. Baka magyabang sila at sabihin, niligtas nila yung sarili nila. Yun yung sinasabi ng Panginoon sa kanila. As we've seen throughout the book of Judges, Israel's problem is not external. Remember the cycle na paulit-ulit? The problem is internal. In this case, the issue is not the number of soldiers or kung ano ba yung advanced na gamit na meron sila. The issue is with the people's hearts. And God knows that if He delivers Israel with this army of 32,000, He knows that when the Israelites will look back after many, uh, many past years at this battle, they will uh, take the credit for themselves and claim that they defeated the Midianites with their own abilities. 
And probably, we can say that God is reducing their pride and He's reducing their sense of self-sufficiency. Reducing their sense of self-dependency. And He's making them to, uh, to rely only to Him. And so God does this uh, through reducing Gideon's army twice in this passage. Lahat ng tao ay may tendency na magyabang, maging proud, at yan ang isa sa sin. Diba? The, pride, the pride of life. Even if there's tiniest opportunity that we have to boast in our own works and rely on ourselves, ay gagawin natin yon. That's our nature. You and I are prone to relying upon ourselves. Kaya na usong libro ngayon, yung may mga title na You Are the Master of Your Life, mga ganon, uh, Becoming a Better You, mga self-improvement, relying only to yourself. As we think about the passage together, bakit, bakit, bakit ba masama yung pride? Okay? Why pride so dangerous in our lives as a Christian? Think about it. If you are prideful, you will never turn to rely to God. Hindi ka hihingi ng tulong sa Kanya. Only relying to your own self. Sabi nga, di ba, ang pride is dapat tatak lang ng sabon, hindi ina-attitude yun. And pride leads us down to slippery slope, thinking and believing that in our lives, we can take care of everything on our own. We can handle we can save ourselves. And then ultimately, we don't need God. We don't need Him kasi kaya natin yung sarili natin, kaya natin solusyonan yung lahat ng problema natin with our own wisdom and strength. We can manage and navigate our circumstances better than God can. And if you are better at something uh, that, uh, than someone else around you, Will you rely on that person? Diba? But tuhingi ka pa ba ng tulong sa kanya? Hindi. Kasi alam mo nang gagawin mo eh. Hindi ka nang papatulong sa kanya. So we know that God is sovereign, <clears throat> infinite, and omnipotent. And yet, we still rather somehow rely. Uh, rely on our wisdom. Sa strength natin. Sa, sa abilities natin. Rather, sa kanya. At yan ang nagagawa ng pride sa puso natin. You can only experience God's grace and power in your life. And it always starts with humility sa Panginoon. Surrendering your pride, your self-sufficiency, or your self-dependency. Verse 3. Um, God reduced their numbers. Verses 3 to 5. Now, therefore, go to, uh, go to, proclaim in the ears of the people, saying, Whosoever is fearful and afraid, let him return and depart early from Mount, uh, Mount Gilead. And there returned of the people twenty and two thousand, and there remained ten thousand. <clears throat> All the troops that is fearful and afraid went home. Yung mga natatakot muwi na. Okay? Surprisingly, 22,000 yung hindi pala ready makipaglaban. Yung natatakot pala. As a leader, nakaka-discourage yun kay, kay Gideon. Kasi una-una, 22,000 is not a small number. At panginaan ka talaga ng loob. Pangalawa, it proves that they don't have faith or trust in God's promise. That He will del deliver them uh, sa into their hands and only remained 10,000 from 32,000 down to 10,000. So, okay na siguro yan. But then in verse 4, God instructed Gideon this kind of odd selection process. <clears throat> Excuse me. And the Lord said in verse 4, Gideon the people are yet too many. Bring them down into the water, and I will try them for thee 
there. And it shall be uh, that of whom I say unto thee, this shall go with thee, the same shall go with thee, and of whom whomsoever I say unto thee, this shall not go with thee, the same shall not go. So he brought down the people unto the water, and the Lord said unto Gideon, Everyone that lappeth of the water with his tongue as a dog lappeth, him shalt thou set by himself. Likewise, everyone that boweth down upon his knees to drink. A lot of commentator have this, uh, have their own opinions about why did God choose to lap water? Some people uh, think through this test, sabi nila, God is trying to eliminate all weak soldiers and leave Gideon and the strong men. Sabi nila. So another commentator naman is the point of the second test is not to reduce Gideon's army. 300 were not meant to be elite soldiers, but a group that is inadequate. That when the battle won, all they could say is this victory belongs to God, not to us at all. Yeah. So, pero hindi naman siya inelaborate ng, ng Bible kung bakit ganun yung pagpili. Eh, di ba, tanongin na lang natin siya uh, pag nakita, siya, nakita natin siya. So, the reason that God went through such great lengths to reduce the army from 32,000 to just 300 was to guard them against their own pride. And that thing have the same tendency toward us. Maaring magtrabaho yan sa, sa mga puso natin, sa buhay natin. Because one of the most common sins, and if you don't realize that you and I commit and struggle with each day, is actually the pride. The, the sin of self-sufficiency. In verse 6 to 8, And the final number of them that lap putting their hand to their mouth were 300 men, but all the rest of the people uh, bowed down upon their knees to drink water. And the Lord said unto Gideon, By the 300 men that lap will I save you, and deliver the Midianites into thy hand, and let all the other people go every man unto his place. So the people took victuals in their hand, and their trumpets, and he sent all the rest of Israel, every man unto his tent, and retained those 300 men, and the host of Midian was beneath him in the valley. From 32,000 to 300, malaking difference po yan sa totoong laban. Kahit gaano ka kagaling mag-martial arts, di mananalo yung 300 against 135,000. Pinapakita ng Panginoon sa Israelites that you should not rely on your numbers or rely on your abilities because the victory is to God alone. Ano yung pwede nating uh, makita dito sa sa mga verses na to, sa lesson na to. Number one, we must not think that we can save or deliver ourselves. Remember the reason why God wanted Gideon to have a small army is that Israel would not be under any illusion that somehow they save themselves. God alone would be responsible for the victory as we know that Gideon and the people of Israel has the joy of that victory in salvation. But all the glory belongs to the Lord. The same thing is true with our salvation, with our eternal salvation with Jesus Christ. We will experience eternal life with the Lord. We will escape eternal death in hell. Not because of something you and I did but because of what Jesus Christ has done for me. As Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 to 9, sabi niya, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. This is not our own doing. This is obviously a different idea than many people have. A lot of people think that good people get to go to heaven and bad people, okay, 
hindi sila makakapunta ng heaven. And it makes sense to a lot of people. Pero sa lungat yun sa sinasabi ng Bible. Ephesians 2 also contradicts those who claim that yes, people are saved by God's grace plus good works or yung faithful performance of religious rituals or practices. Parang God's, uh, God's grace plus, plus works is equal to salvation. Kung totoo yun, may participation pala tayo sa salvation. At syempre, may pagyayabang tayo kasi may participation tayo doon. Ayan, present ako lagi sa church, ha? Tumutulong ako sa ministry. Nagdudunit ako sa lahat ng charities. Diba? O edi, wow. Hindi po na-earn ng kaligtasan. Hindi points, pointing system na pag 100, naka 100 points ka, and you are saved. Wala po tayong participation sa salvation. It is by grace of God through faith alone, through Christ alone. And it is God's gift. Kaya nga po, gift eh. Bigay. Hindi naman, oh, happy birthday, Genesis ha. Sasabihin sa akin, ay sige, dukot ako sa wallet ko, bibigyan ko siya ng, ng pera. O ito pa yung voucher. ba? Insulto yun sa, sa, sa nagbigay ng gift. Okay? And, and also, the worst form of boasting is when we try to take credit of our faith, suggesting a reason that you are a believer because, well, my neighbor is not as mas, uh, smarter or not as um, good as me. Okay? And it doesn't give guarantee of ha- having salvation. Sabi nga ni, ni, ni Spurgeon, and I quote, The only thing I contribute to my salvation is the sin from which I need to be saved. I just want to ask this question. Have you received God's gracious salvation through Jesus Christ? This is the most magnificent gift in the universe. Eternal life, assurance that you will be with the Lord in heaven forever. Those are yours if you will stop trusting yourself. Stop thinking that you are good enough and instead rely on Jesus Christ to save you. O baka naman, you, uh, maybe, dahil hindi ka nagtatrust sa Kanya, kasi iniisip mo na, na you are totally messed up and everything is bad at it is too late to ask God for forgiveness. Nagkakamali ka, kaibigan. Kasi sinasabi ko sa'yo, no one is so good that they do not need Jesus to save them. And there is no one so bad that Jesus cannot save them. Brethren, if you are not trusting in Jesus Christ to save you, or if you are not sure, um, you can talk to us. Or, di ba, mag-PM ka sa mga naka-online, nanonood ka online. Today, um, because nothing is more important than knowing for sure that you have received God's salvation by grace through faith in Jesus Christ alone. Number two, remember that a lot of times our weakness enables us to experience God's grace. Madalas sa kahinaan natin mismo, nahanap natin yung victory and joy sa Panginoon in our Christian life. Gideon's army of 32,000 is smaller than Midianites' force, forces. But still impressive number, when God reduced only 300 men, it looks hopeless. Suicide yun sa kanila. God's plan was to bring victory to Gideon not through their strength, but through weakness in the form of 300 men. The Bible gives us a man who were used by God in his weakness state. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7 to 10. And lest I should be exalted above measure through, uh, through the abundance of of the revelations, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to befay me, lest I should be exalted above measure. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice, 
that it might depart from me. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses, for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then am I strong. I don't know exactly what is the thorn in the flesh. It is possible physical, yung nararamdaman niya ni Paul, or emotional distress. And it is the will of the Lord sa kanya. Hindi naman natin pwedeng sabihin na, ah, si Paul, kulang sa faith yan. Kaya siya nagdurusa, kaya siya ganyan. Yan yung paniniwala ng iba, yung word faith movement ata, kung di magkakamali. That you are lacking faith daw if you are suffering. Like you have pain at walang walang ano walang scriptural support yon yung yung kind of view na yon it is the opposite even the most faithful okay sincere and committed Christian it is not immune from hardship mapa persecution man yan sa John chapter fifteen di ba or sickness Whatever it was, obviously, uncomfortable kay Paul yun. And it slows him down to do ministry. Paul prayed na sana alisin na lang yung nararamdaman niya, na pumipigil sa kanya. But God answered him, no. That's not that, uh, what would be good for you. And God's power works in his weakness. And that weakness kept, kept him relying sa Panginoon kept him relying on God. Kasi if everything moves smoothly, okay, Paul would have been tempted to become proud and possible relying on his own strength and abilities. His thorn made his life difficult and that difficulty kept Paul looking to the Lord for grace, mercy, and strength to make it through each day. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for um, thank you for the lesson, Panginoon. We believe, Panginoon, that um, that you that our weakness is made um, strong, Panginoon, through you alone. Thank you for saving us. Thank you for uh, for. Um, taking away our sins, Panginoon, washing away our sins sa cross ng Kalbaryo, Panginoon. And as we continue this program, Panginoon, bless each one of us, rebu rebuke us, Panginoon, kung meron man, and forgive us for the sin that we've done, Panginoon. We know that we are perfect, Panginoon, but please help us to grow spiritually, to walk with you, Panginoon. At dun sa aming, uh, sa aming, testimony, Panginoon, is makita ng ibang tao to um, to them to believe that you are the true and living God, Panginoon. Maraming salamat po muli sa pangalan ng iyong anak na si Jesus. Amen.